Hello, I'm Susun Seino, Professor of Molecular and Metabolic Medicine, Kobe University Graduate School of Medicine. I'm happy to highlight our article published in Journal of Clinical Investigation, which was done in wonderful collaboration with Kenji Shimomura and Patrick Rossman and their great teams. Insulin secretion from pancreatic beta cell plays a central role in glucose homeostasis, and its failure is associated closely with the pathogenesis and the pathophysiology of diabetes, which is a global health problem. We have been investigating cell signaling in insulin secretion in health and disease for many years. Glucose is the primary initiator of insulin secretion. The ATP-sensitive potassium channels, KTP channels are essential for glucose-induced insulin secretion, GIIS, by coupling the beta cell metabolic status to its electrical activity. Many years back, we clarified that beta cell KTP channels comprise two subunits, Ki6.2, an inward rectifier potassium channel, and SUR1, a receptor for anti-diabetic drug, Sulfonylurea. In addition, hormonal neural inputs are critical for normal regulation of in insulin secretion. The gut hormones called inquitin, GLP-1 and GIP, which are released in response to meal ingestion, are particularly important as they prevent postprandial hyperglycemia by amplifying GIIS. Utilizing this inquitin effect, incretin based drugs such as DPP-4 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists have been developed and are currently used worldwide for diabetes therapy. In the physiological state, both GLP-1 and GIP are required for maintaining normal blood glucose levels and both amplify insulin secretion mainly through G-protein signaling GS. However, why only GLP-1-based drugs are effective in improving insulin secretion diabetes is not known. In this article, we address this question from various approaches. This study is a fruit of our 20 years research. Let me introduce our young colleague, Okechi Odori, a major contributor of this study. He is presenting the essence of the results. Hi. I'm Okech and I'm excited to introduce our recent key findings. We generated beta cell specific R6.2 knockout mice and found that the mice exhibited severely impaired glucose tolerance and their glucose induced insulin secretion was also impaired. Exogenously administered GLP1 restored glucose tolerance while GIP was largely ineffective. When we perfused the knockout mice with GLP-1, the overall insulin secreted was comparable to that of control, while GIP uh, induced very significantly low insulin secretion. As previously mentioned, both GLP-1 and GIP are thought to activate GS signaling in the physiological state. We were therefore surprised to find that both glucose and GLP1-induced insulin secretion were abolished when GQ signaling was inhibited, but response to GIP did not change. We then followed GQ signaling and observed that all the downstream signals, including IP1, a downstream metabolite of IP3, intracellular calcium, and PKC activity were all increased suggesting enhanced GQ signaling in the CAR6.2 knockout beta cells. Using FRET, we observed that GLP1 directly activates GQ in CAR6.2 knockout beta cells, but GIP does not. Now, absence of functional KTP channels in beta cells of CAR6.2 knockout mice persistently depolarizes their cell membrane. Therefore, using different models such as normal mice and human beta cells chronically treated with high glucose and beta cells from diabetic KKAY mice, we found that these beta cells were persistently depolarized even at low glucose. 
we also found that GN21 induced insulin secretion was largely retained in these models when GIP was not. In summary, we show here that persistent membrane depolarization of beta cells due to chronic hyperglycemia or sulfonylurea treatment switches a major amplifying signal from GS to GQ. And this switch determines the differential effects of GLP-1 and GIP in diabetes, as GLP-1 can activate both GS and GQ, but GIP can activate only GS. The present findings provide important considerations of insulin secretion-based diabetes therapies. We are now investigating the detailed mechanism of the GS to GQ signaling switch by persistent depolarization. Thank you.